Hi, I'm Lise Colucci, and I am one of the life coaches at queenbeing.com, where we help you to discover, understand, and overcome toxic relationships, especially when there is a narcissist involved. If you have any questions about narcissism, head over to queenbeing.com where we have lots of information. If you're in need of coaching, check out the link in the description of every video. There's lots of information there. And there's also a link for group coaching if that's something that you are interested in or needing. So today I wanted to talk a little about the question of whether or not someone is a narcissist. People often say they can't tell or they're struggling to understand whether or not the toxic person in their life truly was a narcissist. If that is a subject of interest, hit subscribe and let's get going. So why is it so hard to believe what we experienced was abuse? Why is it so hard to believe that someone could truly be a narcissist? So I'm gonna start off by saying, we can't ever know unless someone is diagnosed. We can't know someone else's literal diagnosis without a professional testing, screening, and giving that diagnosis. But what we can do is we can see the behaviors and the patterns, and we can certainly link those behaviors and those patterns to narcissistic traits. The other thing I wanna ask here is does it really matter what the diagnosis is if someone treats you badly in your life? You know, if someone is hurting you and abusing you, does it matter what they're diagnosed as? Also, just because someone could possibly get better or improve, does that mean you should spend the rest of your life hoping and waiting for them to do so? Are you hoping to live this drama-free life and not experience the sufferings of the words and actions of your partner when they lack empathy towards you? Since there's very little hope for a narcissist who is diagnosed with MPD to change according to what we know, do you wanna spend the rest of your life hoping that there might be a change? And even if they could, do you know how hard it is to change a behavior when you want to? Imagine trying to change just the slightest behavior in yourself and how difficult it is even when you want to. So someone who, abuse, someone who abuses you and treats you in a certain way because of how they relate in relationships would take an awful lot of time, an awful lot of therapy and and then even maybe not be able to make the changes needed to be healthy in a relationship. Does that make sense? I think we're waiting for the answer because until we know that a person truly has no empathy and can't take accountability, and that it's truly someone with NPD, we think we shouldn't give up. We think often that there's hope. We believe the highs of the good times and think that the basis of the relationship is made up of those good times. But I'm here to tell you that the basis of a relationship is a mix between the highs and the lows. It's two people relating that know how to reconcile hard times and come together in good times. The way a person reconciles an argument shows a lot about how they relate within the relationship. I'm gonna come out there and say it does not really matter if someone is diagnosed with NPD. If that person cannot take accountability for their actions and will not take steps needed in a very short period of time to begin making changes to reconcile their behaviors towards you, then your life is being spent waiting on something that is only your own dreams. Does that make sense? It's your hopes. People who have a pattern of behavior over and over and who have left you feeling the way toxic people make you feel. In other words, they've left you possibly feeling like a shell of yourself because no matter how hard you try, it's never enough because they are constantly putting you down. Your efforts in the relationship take over your life while they're off doing whatever they want and behaving however they want because the gaslighting is so bad you can't see or think straight. All, are the, all of these things make it really difficult to leave them because they're mixed with the love bombing and the good times and the hope, right? And sometimes they even make false amends, right? And try and make it seem like things will get better, but it never does. It is not something fixable. It truly does not matter whether someone is diagnosed with NPD if they are displaying narcissistic traits within patterns of behavior that continue over and over during a duration of time and they become toxic in a relationship. People feel that perhaps they'll get closure if they know the person truly has a diagnosis of NPD. Okay, so ask yourself, what would it truly solve? And then ask yourself why that matters. 
when what really matters is your emotional health. What really matters is that you have a choice to be in the relationship that you're in and not trauma bonded and stuck there. When you're with someone toxic, you're trauma bonded and that choice feels like it's taken away. So my suggestion here is to try and understand what a healthy relationship looks like. And by researching and listening to people who have them, you might start to understand that what you're living when you're with someone who's toxic is not a healthy relationship. Does that make sense? You get to see the difference between it and decide what it is you want for your life. So to find the closure you need, realize that it's your life and you can take steps to improve, improve your life and move beyond the toxic person. You deserve more and you always did deserve to be treated respectfully and kindly and the way someone who relates in a healthy relationship would towards you. The closure comes often through indifference towards the toxic person and you can gain that indifference through focusing on your own life. Okay, so another thing that happens when you've been emotionally abused over and over is your brain sort of has this defense mechanism that creates abuse amnesia. It's like you forget just how bad it was. Have you had that experience or you totally forget the nature of things that happened or that were done to you? And you may even forget the entire instance of abuse that happened and only have some like sort of flash of it now and then, or maybe a trigger reminds you of something and you suddenly remember a whole scenario or a whole scene of abuse. This abuse amnesia can be really confusing and it's a form of or part of the cognitive dissonance process, okay? So what it's doing is it's keeping you from seeing what you need to see in order to stay away from that person because it's helping you cope during the traumatic event. Gaslighting doesn't help with that either, right? Because you're being told nothing's really happening. Cognitive dissonance also creates a problem because your mind might understand what the person did is wrong and toxic, but something in your emotions gets you to hold on to hope and believe that they have a good side and should be given another chance or whatever it is you're feeling, okay? You know what I mean if you've ever felt this. Your heart and your head are like two different dialogues going on at the same time. It's confusing and it can make it hard to know how to make a decision and how to make a decision about the relationship or even the other person. So when you mix that together with actually forgetting because of the abuse amnesia, it can be really hard to remember the patterns or even to be able to see the patterns that are going on anymore. Narcissistic people abuse others repeatedly. It's not an isolated event. There's a pattern of abuse that happens within toxic relationships. Seeing those patterns can truly help you understand what it is you're living with or living through or have lived with. Knowing whether someone has a diagnosis is not the answer because then you have to research and actually, you know, you keep digging into what it means and what it could be and is it right or is it wrong and should they get re-diagnosed, you're focusing on them. Basically what I'm trying to say here is to recenter your focus on your own well-being, your own needs, and most of all your own healing. Getting validation is important and it can be useful to go to a group of people who have experienced the same abuse, to a coach who is trained and compassionate and caring when they listen to you so that they can offer you the validation or to a therapy, of course, because that can be useful for the same purpose. But you have to make sure that the person understands narcissistic abuse and toxic relationships. Things like this can really help you feel less alone and help you understand what happened. So another thing I wanna say is I often hesitate to even use the word narcissist when I'm talking because what really matters is the toxic behavior that you experienced. The abuse and the emotional pain that you experienced or are experiencing is what matters and learning to keep away from that person who would repeatedly be toxic to you is what's important. It's important for me as I'm making these videos to make sure anyone wanting to keep toxic relationships out of their life has an understanding of the bigger picture. You know what I mean here? That it doesn't matter what someone is diagnosed with or called if they are repeating actions towards you over and over without any change or sense of remorse or empathy and without consideration or accountability, without considering your needs or the pain that they've caused you or maybe even liking the pain that they've caused you, that they are toxic. Using the term narcissist is really just to understand the pattern of behavior and understand that there really are people out there without empathy 
and with very or with very little empathy that will use similar tactics over and over again and also similar to each other's tactics over and over again if you know what i mean because it's like people always say it seems like they're playing out of the same book so using that word narcissist to me just helps get the information that we need to keep toxic people away labeling the actual individual is often not even that useful there isn't more you can do for someone to make them change and be a better person people should want to change to be a better person toward others because they're striving to spread goodwill or to do good toward those they care about and those around them right it's not your fault nor is it your job to fix that other person's toxic behaviors towards you so with that said for more information about toxic abuse head over to queenbeing.com and if you need any help again there are a lot of links in the description of every video Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.